guys? I'm Boo Carlisle. You probably know me from the Kicking Asphalt blog. I'm here with Car Tour Director Keely Dubinsky. We got something new if you haven't already seen it. We're going to be doing the Tour in 12. So we got our own Car Tour blog this year. Excited about that? I'm so excited. I think it's going to be really special to be able to tell uh, the stories of these competitors and some of the behind the scenes stuff. Um, you know, we got to see that a little bit at Caraway when we did that vlog, and everybody loved it. So we are definitely going to continue. We figured if you love the behind the scenes of the tour so much, you're probably going to really enjoy the behind the scenes of the Touring 12 this year. So we're really excited to have Boo with us. It's going to be on Racing America. Um, you know, there are so many different people involved this year, um, extending resources and, you know, helping us through... Uh, some, di some difficult you know challenges that we've had in the past so we are just beyond thankful to be here we are so excited <laughs> y'all remember this is a vlog this ain't professional this ain't smoking mirrors this is raw what we see every week at the racetrack so Mickey is gonna have plenty of fun with it and we'll let you on a little inside I'll let you on a little inside we got me and her got big plans coming up for the throwback race so if, you, awesome. if you're a fan, a history fan of short track racing, keep your eyes peeled. Get you a look at the four tenths mile over of Southern National Speedway. Be riding with the number 24 of Mason Diaz today for the 125 lap car store race. Here with Mason Diaz, driver of the number 24 Solid Dark Carriers late model stock. Mason, we're here at the family place today, but you do not test here as much as a lot of people would like to think. Talk about that. Yeah, no, um, my dad and a couple partners bought this place back in 2012, or 2011, first year of 2012, and dude, we live four hours away. Um, this place is not close to us at all, so uh, it's kind of hard for us to get down here to test. Um, back when I was racing here a little more full time, getting, you know, I ran laps here when we first bought the place, you know, when I was moving to legend cars or going to pros, I, I did kind of that, but ever since then, it's not worth the drive for me to come here, you know, pay a team to come out over here to come test, or for me to drive down, it's just almost better to go to Hickory to test or somewhere else, it just makes more sense financially. Most of the time I see you in a uh, cleanup truck, you know, you're, you're doing the heavy hard work around here. So what's it gonna be like today to be able to actually be competitive and turn laps in this place, try to get the first cars to a win of the year? Yeah, no, um, for years I, I, I raced here from, you know, 2013 to 2019, tw actually 2020. And I was over there changing tires. My team, I'd be late to practice. My team had to come get me, hop in the car, go race. And and after 2020, I told my dad, I said, hey, I'm done done racing here. It's just it's just too much for me uh, running around doing, you know, cleaning up truck. and. It's just, it's just too much. And uh, ran the ARCA race here in 2021. That was the last time racing here. Now I'm excited to get going today. It's a place that I truly love to race at. Um, I know that sounds cliche since you know I own it, but <laughs> it, I really, truly do enjoy the place. Um, but normally, yeah, clean truck, tow truck driver. I mean, you name it. I'm normally running around here. Breaking up to, fights at the Thanksgiving yeah, Classic. Yeah, the Classic was a, that was a long weekend this year, but it ran. I, I thought it ran really, really smooth. So minus the rain forecast that you know kind of. Kind of like yesterday. It's kind of like yesterday, you know, just the rain just made it gloomy days and long days. But, you know, running around, hopefully today we'll be running around out front and not in the cleanup truck. So Absolutely. We'll talk about the new team. You changed teams over the offseason over here at Chad Bryant now. So uh, you clicking with the guys good so far? Had a real good uh, Florence run back in uh, in November, a welcome party. Yeah. Uh, no, it's switching the team from Mike Darn Racing to Chad Bryant. I I've enjoyed the change. Um, a little bit different. You know, over at Darns, it was all my equipment, having to worry about this and that. What do I need to buy this year? And now this year, just, you know, show up, kind of bring your helmet kind of deal. And um, been in the shop a few times now, working on the cars, hanging out with them. And uh, Florence was a good was a good showing for us both times. South Carolina 400, we had a really fast car, just not the finish we wanted. And the icebreaker this year, you know, qualifying 17th, finishing fourth on track, third after Tech. So it's been a, it's been a good, Good start with this team. Hopefully we can keep going with the momentum. See Mark and Peyton up here putting up the restart zone. What you got going on up here, Peyton? We are hanging our restart zone for the 2023 season. KRC power steering is back and it's pretty. I like it. It's different, it's new colors than last year. So I'm excited. Mark, where's the restart zone start at? The restart zone's gonna start right here. This might come into play in the big pro race and late model start oh, race yeah, today. The KRC restart zone, that's where the races are won and lost. 
I mean, it's definitely an action packed part of the track. I mean, when those leader fires, he better be ready to go, and he better be ready to be the first one down on the inside in turn one. Almost time for practice. We had a couple late entries. Yeah, yeah, I did see so like, oh, had no. a few sneak in. Yeah, which is good. Good. So we are now at 33 late models and 25 pros. pros. Can you believe that? <laughs> the pro count has stepped up drastically. It really has. Oh my gosh. How exciting. Uh, time for practice to start. Uh, Mason to get two 20 minute practice sessions. See, get your car dialed in before two time laps of qualifying. So, uh, let's see what I can do. practice is over with what you think about your number 24 solid dark carriers uh first round we're pretty good um just trying to it's a little tight late center and uh second round we tried some adjustments and uh took a little bit longer to adjust the car we thought and we only made like seven laps we went out with like two two minutes to go in practice and we making some swings trying to do new things trying to figure it out but we're taking it all right back out going up kind of what we practiced thursday and uh hopefully we'll be good you was top 10 in uh first practice are you going back to those adjustments you said yeah we're going some, some similar to that something more we were doing thursday um we kind of figured this is better and they're kind of in between they're kind of the same i kind of like what we're doing thursday better with qualifying coming up do you have a plan i mean uh you know is the first lap the hard lap is the second lap always the fastest lap um you know just be consistent you know get it's cold outside first of all so get heat in the tires as much as you can and and just be smooth ready <laughs> for the driver's meeting. Jack's gonna let him blow the horn.
Jack's done a great job. We aren't gonna mess up what he what he started. We hope to build on it. But we all need to take a second and appreciate the work he's done. The business been incredible. caught up with uh, Jeff Burton, one of the new owners of the uh, the Cars Tour. So Jeff, what do you think so far today? Well, it's, it's for, for me, it's a ton of excitement. I've been texting uh, Justin and Kevin and, and uh, Junior. Uh, all of us are really excited um, coming in this morning to see all the cars, uh, which I was here yesterday, but seeing all the cars, uh, knowing they're going to go on track today. There's a lot of cars here, both in the pros and in the uh, late mile stock cars. And what's, uh, what's fun is the, the amount of quality competition I mean this this is gonna these are gonna be really difficult races to win uh, there's a lot of enthusiasm and excitement through the garage and um, you know I love being at a racetrack I, I there's 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 I'm 55 I've been going to racetrack since I was seven and uh, still like it as much today as I, as I did then well Jeff we know that uh, Dale has showed interest in running more races this year and Kevin is there a chance no. that uh, no, <laughs> nothing whatsoever no you know so so you know I, I don't know why but but I'm just the kind of person that I do what I'm doing. I'm 100% in it, and then um, and then I move on. And and I can't. My my vision of driving a race car has as much to do with the preparation, all the work that goes into it before you get in the race car. To me, that's part of what racing is about. And uh, I don't want to do that. I just I'd rather put I'd rather work doing something else. Um, you know, I got a lot going on. Obviously, with this, uh, with the drivers council, with with NBC. And that would just add something else to me. And, it, it, and it's not something that would be rewarding to me. I know that sounds crazy. Uh, as much as I race, people are like, I don't understand, like, why don't you want to race? And I, I think it's because I've just moved on. And, and I loved, I, I absolutely loved driving a race car, but it wasn't the actual driving part of it. It was all the things that you had to do in order to have the privilege to drive a race car. And, and those things just don't mean as much to me anymore. So. Uh, I just you won't you won't see me in a race car. And if you do, some crazies happen. But uh, but I don't have any plans. Well, thank you for what you've done for uh, helping preserve the cars tour and uh, looking for big things in 2023. Well, we we're excited about it. We we think that we think we got great competitors. Uh, it's a great series already. Jack and his team have done an incredible job. We hope to add to it and uh, make it better. Uh, we didn't get into this for a year or two. We got into it to make it good long term, and we feel like we can do it. And we're excited about it. All right, we're getting ready to go qualify. What are you thinking so far? How's the day went? Opening day? It's been good. Uh, I was kind of expecting a little bit more chaos just because it normally is chaos. All right, now you done done it now. Yeah, well, there I know. it goes. Oh, shoot. All right. Yeah, is there it goes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Where's the wood? Um, no, but yeah, everything, everything's been great. I think something that's really cool, too, um, is that like all the competitors keep coming up and saying, you know, how excited they are to be here and like get racing and stuff. Also, check this out. We got almost 60 on the ground. <laughs> Touring 12 beer. Lo and behold, this is where there we it is. It. Part of the Touring 12. What yeah. do you get? A case of beer. So we, uh, I guess somebody's crew chief was all stressed out, and so the the driver came up and said, "He's gonna need one of these after the race. So I want to <laughs> make sure that I got him." I said, "Ten more." Um, so yeah, it's been good. We're excited. Let's go.
Qualifying's over with, Mason ended up seventh. So he'll be starting the, uh, inside of row four, 125 laps. All right, Mason, qualifying to time in P7. So a good starting spot here for 125 laps. What's the plan? Plan's just to sit there riding, try to be up front throughout the race and just hope to be at the end. It's gonna be a long, long race for saving tires and keeping the car in one piece. It's gonna be a lot of riding going on. So being able to start on the inside, that's already a win in itself right there. Is uh, is it gonna be just keep it as tight as you can of the car in front of you as everybody tries to dive down to the inside? Yeah, for the most part. I mean, it's just gonna be like what we saw at Florence or even Goodyear or New River last weekend. It's just gonna be a ride around race. So everyone's gonna fight for the bottom for a little bit. Um, it is a benefit to be already on the bottom. So hopefully pick a couple spots in the beginning and hopefully everyone can settle down and ride. If not, we might need to fall back a little bit more. Well, do you think there'll be an outside line come in as the race progresses on or is it just gonna be single lane the entire time? No, I, the outside lane here, you maybe have two laps. And then if you're not down by two laps, then you're, you're just gonna, you're along to ride the train until it's done. All right, now the qualifying is over with, we'll get ready for uh, pre-race ceremonies. Pro late models go first, so Mason will race after them. So they got a 100 lap race first, and then be time 125 laps for Mason starting seven. Carrier Chevrolet, piloted by this 22 year old out of Manassas, Virginia. Say hello to Mason Diaz. That star spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the Let's do it. Absolutely. We have waited for so long, for so many months since the announcement of everything that has changed here in the Cars Tour. The one thing that will not change in this series is you are going to see the best drivers and you are going to see one heck of a show. As the pace crew...
family's okay, so we'll live to race another day. But thanks to all the fans. 95 laps to go in this one. Millington will lead us back to the green flag. McCaskill may have had it at the stripe as he gets a great launch there on the top side into one and two, though. Give it to Ryan Millington off the corner. They are side by side for third, for fifth, and for seventh behind. to try to take that as Diaz checks oh. up and Caden Honeycutt gets the worst end of that and I don't know why they lifted right there. <laughs> strategy play and you can see Honeycutt pulling up to the side of Mason Diaz under caution. Expressing a little bit of displeasure there it appears.
right, Mason, ran in top five most of the day, ended up in eighth tonight, 125 laps of Southern National. Tell us about it. Yeah, it was a, it was a solid night, just trying to figure out these cars with Chad. We uh, fired off pretty good and just worked tight, tight, tight through the race, trying to work himself around it. and. Uh, just towards the end there got too tight that lap 70 caution just got stuck on the high side um got stuck with fourth there and we dropped like a rock on the high side and then once we let, let the tires cool back off went back at it we're just as fast as the leaders but just can't pass anyone so um if if we would have been able to be in the odd position for that last restart i think it would have been different but we weren't uh, top 10 coming out of southern national headed to florence is that a good track for you uh with chad so far yeah we finished South Carolina. We have two races there, so I'm looking forward to getting back to the place that I've been with Chad before. All right, man. Well, we appreciate you letting us tag along today. And uh, how can we find out more about Mason Diaz Racing? Yeah, just uh, follow me on all uh, social medias, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Mason Diaz Racing, and uh, follow along for the year. All right, Keely. That's the end. That's a wrap. Round one is over for the Solid it Rock is. Carriers Cars Tour. It is. Uh, this, this season opener has been amazing. You know, obviously, I keep saying how many cars that we had, and it was really cool for Mike Hopkins to get a first time win in the pro. Came all the way down here from Maine, so that was really cool. Ride. Yeah, yeah, the I guess the tagline now is like from Maine to Victory Lane or something like that. I liked it. It was car cool. tour pro late model. Yes, yes. And how then, about 25 uh, cars though? Gosh, it was, it felt like you were watching the late model stocks out there. Like there were so oh, many yeah. of them. It was, it was so cool. Yeah, we're, we're very, very blessed and thankful. And, you know, Deke McCaskill, like watching his whole family celebrate it. It was actually RNS Chassis' 50th win. Oh. Yes, yeah, so that was a big moment for all of them over there. Um, so up next, Florence Motor Speedway. Florence, late model stocks only. Yeah, so um, that one's gonna be good. We'll get back down to South Carolina. And uh, if you wanna see more action, like, comment, and subscribe. <laughs>